this world. Iron Man is one of the most popular superheroes in the world right now. And yet, for the longest time, the Iron Man comic has been atrocious. And Iron Man number 600 is a very good example of that. You open this book, and what do you get? An AI version of Tony Stark giving you an entire page of Whedon speak. This is a note to all of you writers out there in the comic book world. Joss Whedon is not that great. His way of writing dialogue is not that great. It's average. You want to know the reason as to why the writing in Infinity War came across so much better than the last two Avengers movies? Because Joss Whedon didn't have a fucking hand in it. That's why. It's not cute. It's not witty. It's not clever. It's annoying. Especially when people are constantly saying, I am awesome. Or this person is awesome. So basically this AI and Riri Williams are awesome. Here's the problem. Riri Williams took over a country and then tried to play it off like, LOL, I'm so random, look what I did on a whim. And the only thing I can remember this AI version of Tony Stark doing in its entire existence in the comics is making an ass out of itself in Secret Empire. Here's the thing though. I really don't have a desire to give you a page-by-page -page breakdown of this book. You wanna know why? You turn the page, there is a bunch more Whedon speak on it trying to fill you in, and it makes it sound terrible. Yeah, it's a recap of what happened, but you still don't want to read it. You turn the page again. Guess what? There is another two-page spread, and a bunch of it is Whedon speak, and you still don't want to read it because it's freaking annoying. But at least Rhodey is alive again. Yes. Here's the thing about this comic. The purpose of this book is Brian Michael Bendis, for better or worse, is fixing everything that he screwed up over the last few years where he has been at Marvel. Killing off characters he didn't have to kill, and so on and so forth, and getting Riri Williams out of the role of Iron Man. But even beyond that, it still introduces a bunch of crap for some reason, Leonardo da Vinci is still alive. For some reason, Riri Williams is going to be trained by Blade. For some reason, this and that is always happening and this is freaking retarded. The dialogue is jilted and boring. It's introducing all of these elements that I honestly do not care about with Tony's biological parents because neither of these characters are fucking endearing. The art, because it's done by several different artists, comes across as inconsistent. The only thing that is truly interesting, to be honest, is tying up the loose threads of the infamous Iron Man where Doctor Doom was Iron Man. And even then, it doesn't do it in a compelling way. All in all, this comic sucks from beginning to end, and this for better or worse, is a great summation of Brian Michael Bendis outside of the street level. All he does is kill people off, and then that gets reversed later. And then from there, what he does is he tries to entice you with Whedon speak, to try to cover up the fact that his writing has been atrocious. Let's be honest about something. Brian Michael Bendis is going to DC to write Superman, and it's probably going to suck, just like his Iron Man sucked. Do you want to know why? Because Brian Michael Bendis can't write characters outside of the street level. I want you to consider something. Brian Michael Bendis is often touted as this award-winning writer. Here's the thing. When he won the Eisner Award, the last time he won it, because he won it several years in a row, it was in 2003. 15 years ago. The only other award of note that he's gotten since 2005, even, was the Inkpot Award in 2010. That's it. Brian Michael Bendis is out of his prime. And I will say this as a fan of his Daredevil run, is that when he was on, he was really on. That and Ultimate Spider-Man were great books. But the fact of the matter is, he has not had it for a long time. 
The last thing of note he did was he turned Ultimate Spider-Man black. That's it. That seems to be the only thing that he can do to really get any sort of recognition these days is to turn a character black. There's just one problem with that. When it comes to Iron Man, Iron Man being black isn't new, Brian. James Rhodes first donned the Iron Man armor in 1983. You're a little late to the progressive party. And this is what sucks is that there are several writers out there that are known for their highs and then at least being consistent. But it seems to me like Brian Michael Bendis is going to go the way of Mark Wade, but being profoundly less of annoying of a human being. And that is, is that he is so far out of his prime that quite frankly, he's almost not even worth bringing up in conversation anymore. As for Iron Man, Dan Slott is going to have his hands full in trying to re-establish this character to comic readers as something worth picking up. And Dan, let me give you a pro tip. Making Iron Man black and a woman isn't going to help the sales. Just write a good book, because Lord knows Bendis could not do it. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you're notified of any and all videos that I do in the future, because Lord knows the subscription function is not working like it's supposed to. With all that said, my name is Micah Curtis. Welcome to My Little Crusade. Dave's Vault.